Greetings to all. Today we are joined by Dr. Abdullah Mufid, HOD of Oral Medicine and Radiology. He has more than 12 years of experience in dental education and has been serving as the academic coordinator of MS General College for more than 8 years. Welcome to the program sir. Shall we begin? Yes. Sir. Oral medicine mainly deals with the diagnosis and management of clinical conditions that affect the oral and maxillofacial region. Sir, could you please explain the relevance of this specialty in our day-to-day -day clinical practice? Okay, thank you. So, that's a good question. So, I would say the uh, among the various specialties we have in the dentistry, uh, probably the oral medicine and radiology is one of the most uh, underrated or underutilized specialty so far. Uh, if you look at it, uh, now, uh, most of us consider the oral medicine and radiology as a non-clinical specialty. That is quite uh, surprising. Even the people from the dental fraternity, they consider the oral medicine and radiology as a non-clinical branch, at least a few of us. But uh, you see, the most of the things you teach, the most of the things what we practice in oral medicine is purely clinical. We mainly deals with uh, handling the patients, we record the case histories, we examine the patients or official structures. We uh, do the investigations and we do the treatment planning and we do the non-invasive procedures, etc. So, I would say it is 100% a clinical specialty and it is 100% a, a clinical subject. So, but in due to many reasons, uh, I feel it is still uh, not you come to its total strength or it is not purely been utilized so far. Uh, because the most of the things we do in the oral medicine department, be it the examination of the patient, be it the recording of the case history, the uh, detection of pathologies, ordering for investigations, designing and treatment planning for the patient, all these are purely a clinical oriented activities. So, no longer we can consider this speciality as a non-clinical branch, it is a purely a clinical speciality by itself. Then, if you look at its application, uh, whether you be a general practitioner, or you be a specialist doing your implant surgeries, you are doing a maxillofacial prosthesis, you do a uh, other surgical procedures, periodontic practice or endodontics, anything. But the principles of your examination, your diagnostic skills and your uh, de decision planning or what is best for your patient, what treatment is ideal in different clinical situations, all these basics of any practice actually comes from the, the fundamentals of this practice comes from oral medicine how best you can evaluate your patient, how best you can decide a treatment planning, how do you communicate to the patient, what investigations are required, what are the parameters you have to decide between various options of treatment. So, these are the fundamentals of any speciality, whether it is a general practice or a speciality or anything. In any medical practice, the fundamentals is, are the examining of the patient, the diagnosing and the treatment planning. Usually, we say that if the diagnosis is done, that means the part of the treatment is completed or the, the problem is solved. So, that part is what is focused in a oral medicine and that is what we learn from oral medicine. Sir, could you please explain the different types of cases and diseases being managed in the oral medicine department? So, as you know, the oral medicine and radiology is a combination of two aspects, the medicine aspects and the maxillofacial radiology. So, if we talk about the medicine, any dental college or any system where there is a multidisciplinary dentistry is available, the patient who enters for a dental treatment first goes through an oral medicine screen. We know that. So, the, all the patient will be evaluated, uh, the case will be recorded and the treatment planning will be done in an oral medicine department. Apart from that, the lot of oral mucosal problem, for example, you say the oral ulcers, we have different types of red lesions and white lesions of the oral mucosa. Uh, we have various uh, pigmented lesions, color changes in the oral mucosa. We have a lot of white lesions, which some of them could be a pre-malignant or potentially malignant disorders. So, all these mucosal pathologies will be uh, evaluated, diagnosed and the non-invasive or the non-surgical management or medical management of these conditions will be done by an oral medicine specialist. Then we have various conditions that affects the temporomandibular joint, you know the joint that connects the mandible to the skull. So, the temporomandibular joint has got lot of disorders affecting the function, causing pain, discomfort, disrupting the jaw movements and etc. So, the patient will be screened for the various temporomandibular joint disorders, they will be investigated for by radiographs and other imaging modalities and we do lot of treatment procedures uh, for treating the temporomandibular joint disorders. 
Then apart from that, uh, we have a lot of uh, diseases that affect the salivary glands, uh, infections, uh, immunological conditions and other disorders affecting the function of the salivary glands. We have diseases that affect the other orofacial structures. So detection of these pathologies or disorders of the salivary glands, mucosa, temporomandibular joint disorders, diagnosing them and treating them in a non-surgical way wherever possible that is a role of the oral medicine specialist in the oral medicine part. When it comes to the radiology, they are mainly we are mainly focused on the uh, you know interpreting for the various radiograph uh, and evaluation of the radiographic findings and coming to the diagnosis and deciding the proper treatment whether it is a surgical or other, otherwise and maybe you know uh, coming to the proper uh, diagnosis based on correlating the clinical as well as the uh, radiographic findings. So this is how the uh, different things that happens in a oral medicine uh, department. Okay, so, so how do we make learning oral medicine more interesting? Uh, I would say the oral medicine itself is interesting and uh, maybe whenever we study about for example you know different people they might have different uh, concepts about making the learning process uh, more interesting but i would say like if you're reading about a disorder disease because most of the time we are reading about the disease it's management it's identification that's how most of the oral medicine is uh, mainly concerned about so when you're reading an oral medicine you're discussing about some pathology if we can imagine that particular patient uh, sitting in front of you and explaining to you that uh, symptoms the problems he or she is suffering from so if you can pictureize that or if you can imagine that in when you when you read that would be easier for you to correlate okay this is the reason that is one thing similarly uh, we have for every uh, clinical symptoms for any every clinical findings uh, there is some underlying uh, process that is happening why that uh, tooth is tender or why that lesion has become firm and consistent there is an underlying histopathological changes are happening so if you can correlate that because of this reason this finding we are getting or because of this pathology this lesion is like this so if you can correlate those things and in some many cases if you can uh, try to pictureize what you uh, see in a uh, in your textbooks or what you read with a patient's experience that would be a very better way to memorize and uh, you know remember these findings even in radiology whenever you read about a radiographic finding you have an image of that uh, particular pathology or you uh, refer the pictures of that or radiograph of, of that and then you start correlating whatever you are reading the points then it's always better to recollect it and better to and make it more interesting that you feel you have a feeling that okay you and now i am seeing a patient with a neuralgia now i am seeing a patient with a salivary gland swelling now i am seeing a patient with a white lesion so each pathology or each condition you consider as that of a patient then that makes it more interesting so would you please care to share the importance of radiographic interpretation in our day-to-day -day clinical practice hey see nowadays uh, everything is very specific so whatever treatment we are doing what outcome we are getting everything is like very planned and specific so this planning comes with the proper imaging modalities including our scanning radiographs and other tools so radiographs and imaging modalities has become an integral part of any health services dentistry surgery medicine or anything so in other way the radiograph becomes a record for what treatment you have done uh, what is the what on ba what basis we have planned the surgery on what basis we have conducted the treatment so radiograph becomes a, a record is a proof of what we have on ba what basis we are planning at the same time it also becomes a, a proof or evidence of post treatment after treatment this is a result what we have achieved so all these are now recorded using the radiographs now if you look at its practical application whether you are doing a general practice or you are doing an endronic practice, you do an implant practice, whatever you do, as earlier said about the uh, med basics of medicine, radiology is in, again applies everywhere you go. It is not a part of a separate specialty. So, in one way, the medicine and radiology is actually into all the specialties, whatever you are practicing, whatever we are doing in the industry. So, uh, the various modalities of imaging, now you take at the IOP radiograph, you take OPG, you take CBCT. All these are applied in different levels at different types of practices. We cannot keep away, we cannot say that now CPCT has come, so we don't require IOP radiographs. IOP radiographs is a routine daily affair in any type of practice. So it is, it is our responsibility, you, as I told you, whatever you are practicing, 
we should have the proper knowledge about how to obtain this proper radiographs and we should know how better we can plan based on the radiograph we should be able to we should attain the skill to identify the minor changes we should able to identify the pathologies we should able to uh, master on how to identify how to interpret and how to plan your treatment so that your patient get the best treatment results so it all are interconnected whatever you uh, practice of ways based on what and what uh, you know reading you get out of your images and your scans so all these are interconnected so you excel here you excel in the outcome you get you give you give a good outcome to the patient so this is the question which all students will be very much eager to know how do we tackle oral medicine from an examination point of view <laughs> okay so see cracking a subject from the examination point of view is almost similar for most of the subjects most of the clinical subjects uh, but uh, you see whenever you study a chapter or lesson we from there we start thinking okay this could be an essay this could be a short essay okay and we start thinking in terms of okay these are the type of question that could come from this particular chapter so you start obviously you start thinking in that terms and meanwhile also we correlate with the previous question papers previous uh, we have a database of lot of question papers of different universities so we get a good collection of that so by uh, getting yourself aligned to the type of question that is coming by getting yourself aligned to different changes of or patterns of that uh, queries or questions that come from that topic makes you helpful or more better maybe to you know make it easier to correlate with your uh, this thing so that you avoid any now when a surprise is during the uh, question when you get the question paper so i think that is uh, quite uh, enough to make yourself aligned to the uh, exam or crackling there is no uh, hidden secrets to it. it's only hard work and your focus on the uh, curriculum your focus on the question papers that has come that will help you in uh, cracking it very easily so sir how is oral medicine and oral pathology correlated okay so uh, there are a lot of confusion among the medical fraternity and some of the public regarding these two specialties i'll not go into that uh, from an undergraduate point of view uh, we study the oral pathology in your third year wherein you will be studying about a lot of diseases we are studying about a lot of pathologies what is the underlying pathogenesis of these conditions how does the cellular changes and microscopic changes happens how it reflects on to the clinical findings we uh, study a lot of things like that but when it comes to medicine uh, we develop little much on that because, but the pathology becomes a basic for understanding the clinical findings so in clinical in, in when it comes to medicine you can get a better perspective of these diseases along with that you get a clinical training on how we clinically examine how we clinically look at it how we clinically approach this patient and how we treat these conditions so the pathology becomes actually a foundation for the oral medicine where we build upon the clinical skills and other uh, treatment aspects based on the foundation what we get from the oral pathology side and when it comes to the practice side uh, obviously the oral pathology is an integral part because they help us in you know finalizing the uh, pathology what is the type of pathology based on the microscopic or histopathological changes in the tissues so that becomes uh, in many conditions or many situation that becomes a final word for the further treatment of the patient so it is always an interconnected or interrelated specialties the oral pathology and oral medicine and it is it should go hand in hand and oral pathology is more of a non clinical uh, support what we are getting from oral pathology is a non clinical support and it should go always hand in hand in the betterment of the patient care and the treat, uh, teaching side so finally what is the scope of oral medicine as a career okay so as i told you in the beginning uh, there are a lot of areas in oral medicine which are relatively untapped for example the temporomandibular joint disorders these days there are a lot of practitioners dentists who are focusing on temporomandibular joint disorders rehabilitation of patients with the tmj problems with appliances special scanning devices and so many therapies focusing on the temporomandibular joint disorders similarly pain management various conditions related to cancer and other problem neurological conditions where pain problems there are complex conditions directly or indirectly related to orofacial structures so there are lot of areas over there and there are uh, spaces like geriatric dentistry uh, palliative care oral care for the bedridden patients palliative patients then oral care in diabetic and other systemic compromised patients so 
in countries like india these areas are relatively not much explored there are still more to explore in these areas where the dentistry now if you look at the newer uh, curriculum that is coming up uh, which is the part of the things are already released we see a lot of you now uh, extra areas where additional training is recommended so if you look in the in that additional areas newer areas recommended we see there is focusing on geriatric dentistry there is focus on palliative care there is focusing on imaging modalities there is focus on uh, geriatric care so many of this comes under the uh, umbrella of oral medicine actually lot of this th- topics extra newer topics and newer dimensions of dentistry comes under the umbrella of oral medicine so that is a scope for the few uh, i mean the undergraduates the bds graduates who's coming out to explore into these areas and get master or guest uh, expertise in this area so they there are option and if you look at the uh, post graduates who comes up this, uh, with an mds degree in oral medicine even now nowadays we have lot of C- cbcts are becoming very popular and uh, hopefully in the future lot of newer uh, diagnostic tools and imaging tools are going to come up obviously so that becomes an area or avenue for newer uh, specialist or mds grad uh, post graduates to explore into those areas nowadays you see a lot of people who are purely doing only cbcts and surprisingly oral medicine radiologists are the only specialty as of now who do work at home because they have a system at home where the f- files come from various centers for the reporting and treatment planning and they comfortably sit at home and do the reporting and uh, treatment planning at home so that is something which we previously never uh, thought of in dentistry so these are the newer horizons or which are uh, or newer areas which are coming up hopefully in the future a lot of things such things are going to come up and uh, along with the dentistry even our specialty is going to you know expand to larger areas hopefully thank you sir for joining us today Thank you